Hi, my name is Jesse Stewart. I'm an assistant professor in interventional radiology at UCLA, and I'd like to talk to you today about minimally invasive treatment of pelvic congestion syndrome. So just a little bit about me. I received my medical degree at Stanford, and then I did my internship at Harbor UCLA after that. I went to Duke University Hospital and did my diagnostic radiology residency training and then additional specialized training in interventional radiology. After that, I joined the faculty as an assistant professor at the University of North Carolina in interventional radiology where I specialized on minimally invasive procedures, in particular for women. And after that, I joined the faculty at UCLA. So what is chronic pelvic pain? This is defined as pelvic pain in a woman lasting longer than six months, this non-cyclical. So it can be worse during your periods, but not only present during periods. And it's a very common complaint for women with an estimated healthcare cost in the USA of over $880 million a year. And there are many potential causes of chronic pelvic pain in women. So pelvic congestion syndrome is a frequently unrecognized cause of chronic pelvic pain in women. And this is also known as pelvic venous insufficiency or pelvic venous incompetence. And the vein dysfunction in the pelvis basically causes blood to flow backwards into the pelvis instead of up towards the heart like it should. And this causes engorgement of veins in the pelvis that can become painful. Um, and these can be either visible on the outside in the groin or labia areas, or they can be invisible on the inside of the pelvis. And this is kind of similar to the pain that some patients experience with varicose veins. So basically, in a nutshell, enlarged abnormal veins do tend to hurt. So what causes pelvic congestion syndrome? So there's a few factors that can predispose women to developing pelvic congestion syndrome. And that includes pregnancy, having a job that causes you to stand for long periods of time, or even compression of outflow veins by other structures. So what are the common symptoms of pelvic congestion syndrome? Typically you get an aching pelvic pain that's worst after standing or sitting for very long periods of time. So typically worst at the end of the day. Uh, you can have pain either during or after intercourse with pelvic congestion syndrome. You can have painful or engorged varicose veins in the groin or labial areas. And you can also have tenderness of the ovary on a pelvic exam. Sometimes you might see leg varicose veins as well with pelvic congestion syndrome. And patients can even present with hip pain or lower back pain with this syndrome. So just to go over a little bit of the anatomy, so there's some usual culprits, um, culprit veins in pelvic congestion syndrome. So most often that's the left ovarian vein, and you can see that here on the screen, this one that's marked in red. And it actually empties normally into the left vein of the kidney, the vein of the left kidney. But sometimes when it becomes incompetent, it flows backwards and fills abnormal veins in the pelvis that become enlarged. Occasionally it happens um, where the problem is with the right ovarian vein, which also, it basically dives into the IVC. And occasionally the internal iliac veins can be contributors as well. So basically in pelvic congestion syndrome, flow into these veins is backwards into the pelvis instead of up towards the heart as it should be. And this causes the endorsed veins to develop. So this is an example of a patient that had pelvic congestion syndrome. And this is a 45 year old woman who had had kids before and she presented with pelvic pain and some varicosities, varicose veins in the groin. You can see here. When evaluating patients for pelvic congestion syndrome, we usually obtain a CT or an MRI to evaluate the veins. With either of these modalities, we're looking for pelvic varicosities, which in this example you can see in the pelvis. This is an MRI uh, looking straight on at the patient. We're also looking for engorged or enlarged ovarian veins. So this is an example of an enlarged left ovarian vein here in this patient. Also, we can evaluate for evidence of vein compression. You can also evaluate for pelvic congestion syndrome with ultrasound, where you're looking for dilated veins around the uterus. And if one of these is positive then, or suggestive of pelvic congestion syndrome, then you wanna go ahead and do a venography session with an interventional radiologist. So essentially, venography involves injecting contrast through a small catheter into the vein, which allows us to evaluate how the blood flow is flowing in real time. The catheter is placed through a tiny incision, either in the neck or in the groin area. 
We use x-ray fluoroscopy, so like an x-ray movie machine, to observe the blood flow within the veins. And we give you some sedation medicine through the IV to keep you comfortable during the procedure. So basically, this allows us to watch the flow of the veins in real time. This is an example of a venography session for this patient. So in this image, I'm injecting contrast into the left kidney vein, which is here. And we see that there's backwards flow of the contrast down an enlarged ovarian vein. So this is suggestive of pelvic congestion syndrome. And again, you can see filling of an enlarged vein lower down. And even lower, we can see engorged abnormal veins around this patient's uterus and the pelvis. So once we can identify that there's pelvic congestion syndrome or a pelvic venous insufficiency on venography, we can go ahead and treat it during the same session. So once we identify the culprit vein, we essentially shut it down. And we, we do that so that the engorged veins in the pelvis can't fill anymore. And the body essentially redistributes the blood flow to drain into more normal veins instead of the dysfunctional veins once that vein is blocked. So the way we do this is that we inject a sclerosant medication into the veins in the pelvis, more uh, low within the pelvis. And that's similar to what we do to treat varicose veins. And it's essentially a drug that damages the vein wall and causes them to shrivel up. After that, we place small coils within the ovarian vein to prevent backwards flow down the vein and the vein from reopening over time. And we place these very carefully to make sure we're just shutting down the abnormal vein. We may also investigate other veins during the procedure uh, just to make sure we're not missing any other incompetent veins. In this image, you can see some of the coils that I placed in this patient's ovarian vein. So patients can go home the same day with a Band-Aid with essentially no downtime after the procedure. So I wanted to go over the outcomes of this minimally invasive treatment for pelvic congestion syndrome. About 75% of patients had a substantial pain relief after this procedure according to multiple studies, which was durable out to at least 36 months where the patients were followed. There are extremely low rates of needing repeat procedures, and there's a low, very low percentage of complications with this procedure, so it's very safe. So in summary, chronic pelvic pain is a very common problem for women. Many women may be suffering from pelvic venous insufficiency, and there are minimally invasive treatments available uh, offered by interventional radiologists that offer very effective treatments with no downtime. Thank you very much. Please reach out to one of our interventional radiology schedulers if you would like to see an expert physician about your symptoms.